Um, yes, my name is uh, uh, Herman Wierga. Um, I am uh, uh, a Dutch guy, I come from the Netherlands, but for almost 10 years already living in Bucharest, Romania. Uh, where I founded the operations for Ortec in Central and Eastern Europe. And Ortec is a Dutch software and consultancy company. Uh, currently, I'm global uh, director of operations. And I will talk in this 20 minutes um, about the power of internal communications, the struggle with it, the, um, the opportunities with it, my own experiences, and uh, I, I hope to share with you and uh, hear your feedback about. Um, as we just saw in the first interesting panel, the value and the power also of, of storytelling, um, I decided to start off with a story. And this uh, is a story about uh, me four years ago, around four years ago. I was traveling back from Vienna to Bucharest, uh, had a heavy week of business meetings uh, behind me, and um, I was looking forward to be home with my family and my, my children. Um, it was very nice weather, plane half empty, and we were approaching Bucharest Airport. Um, I don't know if you fly a lot, I fly quite a lot. I like to sit next to the window and then look out of the window and see uh, the landmarks, see the houses becoming bigger, the cars become bigger, but also see the start of the, of the airport area, the, the fences, the, the the runway. So I was staring there out of the window, uh, always already mentally preparing for, for being home. And we were going down close to the, to the runway, um, uh, uh, preparing for landing. I was already getting my mobile phone out to, to switch off the, the flight mode. And all of a sudden, a big sound, uh, engines going full power, nose in the air, and we're going back up in the air. This was the first time for me that instead of <laughs> touching ground, we were actually uh, back up, uh, going quickly in the air, making a quick right move. Um, and within seconds, we were not driving towards the gate, but we were again uh, a few hundred meters in the sky. Um, the purser came to the, to the microphone and he said, uh, well, as you all noticed, we didn't land yet, but <laughs> uh, we will give you some more information uh, about uh, our arrival as soon as I have it. I said, okay, well, it seems everything under control, nothing, nothing to worry about. First time for me, but who, who knows? Um, a few more minutes uh, passed by and then uh, the captain, the, the pilot, uh, came to the, to the microphone and, and he said, uh, yeah, dear passengers, um, Unfortunately, we had to break off the, the, the landing. Uh, we have to make a go around. Uh, we have here an uh, unexpected failure of one of the indicators. Um, uh, well, we will try again to land probably in a few minutes. Well, uh, people were starting to look at each other a bit more disturbed. Uh, is this, this doesn't really sound very comforting now. Um, and in the meantime, we were making the sharp turn circling around the airport area. Um, again, making the same approach, me watching out of the window, seeing the same landmarks coming bigger and bigger again. Whole different feeling than the first time, <laughs> because <laughs> what, what, what was going to happen right now? Purser back to the, to the microphone. I said, please uh, take the safety instructions from the pocket uh, in, in the seat in front of you and study carefully the <laughs> brace position. Uh, the people who wear glasses, please take off your glasses, put them in your hand and uh, put your hands over your head uh, against the chair in front of you. Okay, this, I don't know if this is uh, uh, real or not. People were half laughing, but at the same time also uh, trying this brace position, which looks a bit awkward. I was sneaking out of the window to see if indeed we were going in the right direction. We were, everything sounded completely normal, the weather clear, nice blue sky, sunny. Um, and then when we approached very close to the runway, all of a sudden the purser and all the f flight uh, personnel were starting to shout, Heads down, heads down, heads down. Uh, okay, this is, this is the real stuff, huh? So there I was with my head down and the chair in front of me. And they kept on shouting, heads down, heads down. This was 
yeah, like a, uh, almost like a, like a nightmare in, in, your, in my head. Uh, a few seconds, it was shouting like that. Then the sound, the sound of just the wheels touching the tarmac and landing like always, ever before. Captain taking the microphone saying, Welcome to Bucharest. Local time <laughs> is 2 <laughs> hour 50 minutes. Uh, thank you for <laughs> flying Austrian Airways. Um, in the end, there was nothing happening. An hour later, the, the plane flew back full with, uh, with new passengers safely returning to, to Vienna. Probably what I have experienced is uh, some safety procedure following an, 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 a problem in the, in the cabin. I, I still don't know uh, to, the, the, uh, to, the, to the moment of today. But I was thinking of this, uh, the, uh, the, this event uh, that happened in my life uh, when I was preparing uh, this speech for communications, about the power of communications. Because communication is about the words you use, the timing of the, the words, uh, the context that you give, uh, the way you, you communicate. Um, probably uh, with, with some small changes, the, the message that uh, was transmitted from the purser and the pilot to us, the passengers, uh, uh, could have been uh, uh, with a lot less impact uh, if they would have taken care a little bit better about how they, they, they said things. Um, yeah, this also happens in, in, in companies. This is not only in, in passengers in the plane. I know a, um, a Dutch company, uh, successful company, fast growing, um, and, and they were, were doing pretty well. But a few months they had a bit disappointing results. And the CFO of the company, um, he was really starting to be worried about that. The revenues were going up, but the costs were going up even faster than the revenues. So, uh, for, as for a CFO, that, that's not a good sign. His alarm bells went off. Uh, and he felt that people were not taking the signals very seriously. So, one night, in front of his laptop, he started to type an email. And uh, in the email, he said, we have serious troubles. Our cost should go down. Um, we should not book flights anymore, we should not do trainings anymore, uh, we should uh, uh, stop spending unnecessary money. And he sent that email to everyone in the organization, from his headquarters in the Netherlands, but also to all the offices around the world, from Europe to Asia, from senior management to junior secretary. The people in their Dutch headquarters they knew the guy, they knew the, uh, the, the situation, they knew the context of the situation. They read next morning the email, they knew it, they had to do something, but they were not too worried. But the people in the offices around the world, they had a completely different conception of that email. As far as they knew, they, they were working for a successful company that was doing great. And now, all of a sudden, out of blue sky, a message from the higher management saying, no, we have a, a failure, uh, we, have, we have something going wrong. They felt like the passengers in that plane. Is this real? Is this really happening? Are we crashing? It took that company a few months to repair the, 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 the fuss that was created by that one email. Uh, a lot of talks with, with the employees, getting together, hearing their story. And uh, for some employees, it was too late. Some of the best employees, they decided to leave the company. They thought, th if they go down, then not with me. Um, that, that shows something, the importance of uh, understanding uh, the receiver of your, manage, uh, of your message, uh, understanding different business cultures. Somebody who did a lot of research to that is, uh, is Geert Hofstede. He used uh, to work for IBM for a long time, and he uh, came with six dimensions of, uh, uh, of understanding different business cultures. Um, and we have the power distance index. That means how hierarchical am I in my thinking? Do I just follow up instructions from the, the people uh, above me? Or do I ask why? Why is this? Do I go into uh, to discussion with, with this person? Um, here you see a map with uh, uh, the countries, the red ones. Uh, there is a big distance, a big uh, hierarchy, a big uh, power distance and the green one, a small power distance. Individualism. Am I thinking for myself, or f do I think for uh, the whole community around me? Um, masculinity. How 
uh, likely am I uh, going to get into a conflict? Do I uh, go for the conflict or do I avoid the conflict? Long-term orientation. Uh, do I think about here and now or maybe about the next generation to come, about my children, my, my grandchildren? Uncertainty avoidance index. How willing am I to take risks? Do I uh, perceive a failure as something fairly uh, problematic or can I live with it? And last one, indulgence. How much do I allow myself to enjoy my life? Huh? Do I uh, like to... Uh, do I spend money on my own benefits or, or not? Um, well, okay, this kind of uh, uh, indicators give the context. Huh? Uh, I myself, I'm managing people in seven different uh, locations in, in, in Romania, Warsaw, in Milan, Kiev, Moscow, Netherlands, Athens. Um, everybody brings of course, as individual, their own uh, background, their own culture, but also in, in the country, in the, in the region where they grow up. Uh, some uh, uh, may, might see work as, as, a, as, a, as a family, uh, some see it as just a way to earn money and they actually uh, uh, prefer more their private life. Um, some people are consent driven like the Dutch polder model, if, you, if, you, if you've heard about it. Uh, some, they like the hierarchical structure, uh, they just follow the instructions. Some are status-driven, some like formal meetings, some like informal meetings. All this is very important when you transmit a message. And, uh, okay, knowing all that, but how do you bridge then between all those cultures? How do you make the bridge between people uh, working and living all different locations. Oh, good management is, is fairly important. Use technology to work together. Uh, try uh, to get the people together as much as po uh, possible, but also, very important, uh, a constant, constant way of internal communication that reaches everybody and uh, uh, takes care of everybody's context and let them also interact with those messages. Um, so, one, one other story, um, a customer of ours, uh, an, a big distributor in, in Central Eastern Europe, um, they, they bought our software. We make uh, software for planning and optimization. There's a lot of mathematics in it, and uh, what we do, what the software that we sell as Ortec uh, does, is uh, uh, saving operational cost. So, uh, doing the same thing with a big better service level, using less trucks, for instance, using driving less kilometers, this company decided to invest in this software. Um, and they hired a project manager, and the project manager uh, knew all his, his courses on project management and on change management and communication. He said, okay, I am not going to make mistakes. I understand the culture uh, of my company. I am going to communicate. So, he asked his higher management, uh, the CEO, uh, can you write a letter to the entire organization uh, describing the importance of this project so that everybody is on board? CEO agreed, the uh, PM drafted a, a message, and the CEO sent it out in the next newsletter to all the employees of the company. Everything well, the project went on. But after a few months, the project started to be a bit blocked. The, the, they had several uh, warehouses, distribution centers all over uh, the region, and from each and every distribution center, uh, feedback was coming that uh, the, the planners were very unhappy with the new system. It was not working at all. It didn't support their business, and they would better throw it out of the window because it's useless. And the project manager was a bit surprised because they did all kind of user acceptance tests, they did all kind of data validation, they did all kind of pilots. Every firm worked perfectly. But now, all of a sudden, when they put it into practice, it didn't anymore. How, how is that? And they asked us to come and to help. And we said, okay, but if we help them, we want to go to one of those regional distribution centers. So we went to the regional distribution center, talked with this planner. Uh, everything indeed seemed to work well. We didn't really understand ourselves either. Why, why are they so unhappy? And we spent two days, we drank a lot of coffee, we drank in the evening a lot of beers with the, with the transport planner, to, and we, we, we got to understand each other. And then at the second or the third day, 
he opened his laptop planner, uh, he looked in his uh, mailbox and he showed us the internal newsletter that the CEO had sent out to the entire organization. Very nice newsletter, proud that we have selected uh, good software, uh, proud to invest in efficiency in organization. After this project will be implemented, our entire planning process will be fully automatic. Okay, will be fully automatic. And and me, the transport planner, I, I, I am actually making the planning huh? fully automatic. Uh, you don't need me anymore. So at the moment that this message was sent out, all the transport planners, they were uh, going against the project. They were doing whatever they could do to block sabotage and not make it happen. Um, what the change management uh, uh, aware project manager and what the CEO didn't think of is to ask for feedback from those transport planners. They sent in the message and they went on with their life, but nobody was listening to the ones that actually were receiving this message. And that brings me to, to something. Uh, and we saw today, I see in, in, the, in the breaks, everybody is checking the, the mobile phones, everybody is constantly uh, online. It was also discussed in the, in the, in the first uh, part. Um, the world is changing. It's not the same anymore as, as, as it was uh, 10, 20, 30 years ago. We go from a, a, a simple to a complex world. And um, you need also in your communication to be aware of that. Uh, you need to be adapt adaptive, adaptive sorry, to the changing environment. Um, if you look for today's uh, requirements for internal communication, um, then you have to be aware of this. Go all the way. That means your communication is not just one newsletter. It is something that you use in all the media, on social media, on email, on newsletters, on flat screens, 24-7. Uh, all the time, whenever the employee wants to read it. Stimulate interaction, uh, that's the one I mentioned. If uh, the, would, uh, the newsletter would have n had a possibility to put comments on a certain uh, message, then for sure some of the transport planners would have reacted to it and the problem of the miscommunication would have uh, brought to the surface in a much, much earlier stage than uh, six months down the, down the, the road. Um, Interaction is crucial for good communication. Uh, personalization of internal news, uh, make it really adapt to the employee. Um, employee ambassadors, uh, employees are looking for best examples. Storytelling helps, of course, uh, but what is the story? You need to have experts in your organization or C-level people or, uh, um, uh, or other important uh, leaders that can tell their story so employees can relate to that. Connect people together and create those expert profiles. Technology is key with that. I mean, uh, we live in, uh, in 2017. Uh, you cannot do that anymore with a simple email or with a, with a simple uh, uh, paper. You need to have multi-channel technology, multi-channel platform to reach all uh, the, the, from the flat screen to the, to the Facebook, uh, to the email in the, in the same time. It needs to be fully branded. Uh, you need to contain smart technology to recommend uh, news items to certain groups of employees, to let them share uh, news, to link uh, company news with external news sources. That is important. Tool is not everything. I mean, you can have a great tool, but if you don't implement it right, it doesn't work. Uh, so you need to bring content to the tool. You need to have a communication manager. You need to, to continuously feed it with interesting information. Um, at Ortec, we make uh, also tools li uh, like that. So uh, apart from, uh, from optimization of, of transport, we do also optimization of, of communication. Uh, but we also use these elements in our own communication. I myself, in those seven different locations uh, where I manage my people, I use all these uh, uh, this ways of communicating. Uh, email and Skype for business, of course. M just normal, uh, nobody thinks about it anymore, but collaborative technology is, is for sure necessary. Newsletter, Facebook, uh, movies. Uh, we do everything to engage with our employees and to make them one team. Um, I will show you very quickly, uh, and then I will uh, have a last slide about conclusions, how we do that at Ortec with an internal movie that we made uh, last year. 
Have you ever wondered why you spend a lot of your time and energy at Ortec? Is it the talented people and the way we treat each other? Is it our inspiring academic culture and our love for mathematics? Or do you just want to solve the unsolvable? Actually, there is something bigger and more intrinsic which drives us as a company, namely, our purpose. Ortec exists because we improve the world using our passion for mathematics. That is the real reason for our commitment and dedication. And our purpose literally leads to a better world. While we reduce the footprint of our customers, helping to save the planet. We save money to fuel new developments, research, and technologies. We improve the employee satisfaction of millions of people. We create a better work-life balance so people can do what they really love. We improve the performance of our favorite sports teams. We share our knowledge and resources to the benefit of humanitarian aid. You can and should be proud of the impact our optimization solutions have on the world and society at large. Every day, our collective efforts, based on our love for mathematics, make the world a little better. So this is our internal movie, internal uh, branding movie for our employees to feel really part of the company. And that, that really worked. Um, conclusions about uh, uh, my contribution. Um, think very well about the message you want to transmit. Um, the words you choose, the timing of the message. Uh, but have also an eye for the different cultures, different business cultures of the people you transmit this message to. Be aware of today's uh, requirements for internal communication. It's not enough to send one email. You have to be interactive. You have to be online. You, you have to make sure it is up to date. And use for that modern and smart technology. Thank you.